I'm a firm believer that pretty much anyone could study computer science, if it's something they're passionate about. I'm also a firm believer that if you're smart, you don't need to be passionate about computer science to get a degree in it. But that's not really why you clicked on this video, so let me truly break down the different aspects of the degree, the difficulty I perceived it as, and hopefully provide enough information for you to evaluate if it's right for you. I'm going to start off right away and talk about the math required for the degree. Most computer science degrees will require you to at least take math up to calculus 2 or 3. You'll probably also have to take discrete math, linear algebra, and maybe a statistics class here and there. And here's the thing, that may sound incredibly daunting, especially if you were like me in high school and barely passed algebra. Here's the thing, after having gone through all my math requirements for computer science, it's made me realize math is incredibly learnable. Now, that may sound like lip service or like a pseudo-inspirational thing that you'd find on Instagram and where I talk about how you could achieve your goals if you set your mind to it, blah, blah, blah. But seriously, math is just a language, and if you struggle with it, it's probably because over time, we've started learning math like, you know, elementary school, you probably strayed away from the foundation that you need to succeed in the next level. The same way how you would do horrible in Spanish 3 if in Spanish 2 you didn't learn anything. I took a three-year gap between high school and university where I learned a lot of self-discipline, and really that's what math is testing in my opinion. Your self-discipline to sit down and learn something. We live in a day and age where there are so many resources to learn math, whether it be online, in a textbook, tutoring, if you're a visual learner, if you're an auditory learner, there are so many resources that can be catered to you to learn. The hardest part is sitting down and telling yourself, well, okay, even though I took these classes in high school, I need to relearn everything. I need to revamp my foundation so that when I go into my first math class, I actually know what they're talking about. The personally, the biggest reason why I had to either retake a class or when my friends failed, had to retake a class, or just the kids around me who dropped the major because of the math, is because I, we, they, just at the time, we didn't put the work in. And it's not just work in the class. It's work, like I said, building up that foundation. So at ASU, most engineers start at Calculus 1, where I barely passed trig in high school. Uh, so no way I was going to be able to do it. I enrolled in pre-calculus. I passed. I enrolled in Calc 1. I dropped it. I took it again in the summer and I got an A. Took Calc 2 and Discrete Math. D Calc 2 and Discrete Math were the same way. I struggled, but then I had to overcome. It wasn't a test of my intelligence. It was a test on how willing I was to sit down for six hours a day and learn what I had to learn. And while I say all this, I was fortunate enough that when I was in my math classes, I didn't actually have to work a job to get my way through school. So I had a lot of free time to focus on my studies. Now, if you have to take care of a family member, if you have to pay your own way through school, yeah, it's going to be a lot harder than for you than it was for me, but it's still doable. So enough about math. What about computer science theory? How hard is it? Finite automatas, data structures, binary arithmetic, etc. These subjects themselves can be challenging, especially for those of you who have difficulties understanding abstract concepts. There are definitely times where I had to suspend disbelief and just accept that things work the way that I'm being taught. That I don't need to fully understand the details of how everything works. So yeah, like I said, the content could be hard, but here's the saving grace. Unlike science, math, English, and the majority of other theory-based classes, all of these computer science classes, they build off each other. And computer science isn't really a regular curriculum in high school. So you could start your degree not even knowing what computer science is. And hopefully your university is structured in a way to where you go in with no previous knowledge. And as long as you do well in all of your classes building up to these harder theory classes, you will have a comprehension of computer science enough to thrive in those classes. Now, the opposite is also true. If, you're, if your university doesn't have a good computer science curriculum, or more importantly, and also way more likely, that in those intro classes your freshman year, were you too busy partying and realizing that, oh, hey, I could still get an A in this class by putting in minimal effort, just because it's a lot of like homework assignments or something, but I don't really want to put in the effort to learn things that's where you're gonna get trapped. Because if you don't have an understanding of the basic computer science theory, once you get to these higher level topics, it is so abstract that you're gonna to have to go back and relearn everything that you're supposed to learn anyway. So in that regard, I actually think these classes are very easy. Easy in the sense of they are very doable. Now, yes, there are some super hard weed out classes at every school and certain courses that are inherently more difficult than others. But those are also the classes where the class averages are like 50%. So as long as you stay within the average of your fellow student, 
most likely you'll succeed. And just to reiterate my point, now the challenging part is if you fall behind, it is hard to play catch up. If you're taking an operating systems class and you barely pass the prereq, then you will struggle in the operating systems class. So in freshman year, when people are excited about their newfound freedom, it's important for you to stay on top of your lectures and develop good habits. Because unlike other degrees, in my opinion, when you fall behind and have to play catch up in computer science, you need to work exponentially harder to get back to where you're supposed to be. And I say that having experienced it firsthand. Finally, let's talk about coding assignments and classes. If you search online on YouTube, there'll be plenty of videos uh, about these programming classes that have assignments that seem like they're impossible and they touch on subjects that you've never even heard of. Well, first of all, those classes do exist. Hopefully by that time in your degree, you know what you're getting into. You understand how to balance your class schedule with the rest of your life. You know your strengths and weaknesses to put yourself in a strong position to be able to commit up to 20 hours a week doing an assignment. At the same time, these really hard assignments that are posted on YouTube almost in this like bragging light -like fashion, normally you're given like at least three to six weeks worth of notice to complete the assignment. So yeah, the 20 hour project may seem really daunting, but if you chip away at it over time, it's no more than any other homework assignment in other classes. Just like how writing a 20 page essay is difficult if you're doing it all in one day, but if you write one page a day for 20 days, it's way more manageable. Now, again, disclaimer, there are some classes that are nightmares. But go on. But if your school has a subreddit, if your school has advisors, which hopefully your school has advisors, um, talk to them. They know the pass fail rate for all these classes. If you struggle in computer networking and you, but you want to learn, that's great. Take a computer networking class. But if that class is hard, don't overload your schedule that semester. If you see that you have three really hard theory classes and then there's a class in Java and you feel like you have a superior knowledge of that language, take that class so that you can focus on the three hard theory classes. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably in the same ecosystem that I'm in. Grinding leak code, browsing through CS career questions. If you have a goal of joining a big tech company, you're gonna have to do some extra work. For the most part, whether it be leak coding, side projects, whatever, but truly, it's something that you, what you get, what you put into it. And you don't need to put in a lot to be successful. It's just what you define as success. If you're a fang or bust, then yeah, your computer science is really hard. As I reach the finish line of my degree, I come to the realization that the biggest skill I've developed and that has been the most important in being successful in my degree has been time management and persistence. If you want to coast and buy and just get your degree, computer science probably isn't right for you. But chances are, if you're still watching this video, then you have enough persistence to succeed. And if that's what you want to do, you could do it. There are so many online resources at your disposal. It's just the willpower to sit down and use those resources. And yeah, for some people, I've seen them sit down 30 minutes before an exam, crack open the textbook for the first time, and they do well. I'm not someone who could do that. And for the majority of people, you're probably not like that either. So don't compare yourself to those prodigies. Compare yourself to yourself and you'll be able to do it.